Yoo-hoo! Did you do that? Excuse me. Did you say Yoo-hoo? I did not. You sounded like you. Just now. No, I haven't said a thing. <laughs> Nobody in here. Perhaps there's a person out of the lawn. Calling out you? Sounds it, like yes. I see no one out here on the lawn. How about the road? A lot of actors talk about, wow, I realized I wanted to act. You know, I had a moment where I, whoa, I, I want to write. The outside world is, is an externalization of this inner conflict. The majority of my work now concerns either being in a land, another land, or in the case of Day of the Picnic, other lands coming here. I think the fact that I grew up in the Middle East, yes, it's in my bones. And circles. Ah, yeah. I know you see Mary Magdalene. She is weeping outside the sepulchre. And now she speaks to a gardener. She doesn't know this gardener is Jesus. Either you are blessed indeed, mm -hmm. or you surely cursed. What? On one level, it's about a witch doctor <laughs> who 30 years later gets his revenge on the widow of a white missionary in a retirement home in the United States. And they are arguing right there in that book, arguing it out for all the world to see, asking us to distinguish right there in this book what is not God from what is God. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Ben Seafood, right? I think I see them. Your husband's regrets. What is the reality? Is it the reality that a witch doctor has arrived and changed her reality the way her husband changed his? Or is she about to die and suddenly realizing that her husband lied? It's such a huge thing. Oh, yeah. So that's part of Either one is fine. Except I actually really believe the witch doctor is there. I actually really believe she's projecting this. Is it a dream? Is it in her head? Mm -hmm. So that that voice isn't too distinctively. Mm -hmm. So just. I, I do think uh, our reality is the bare tip of something. Have you heard Betsy Fulbright of spiritual wickedness in high places? Spiritual wickedness? Yes. Have you had experience with this? With Ultimately, underneath all of that, what really no, matters no. is is the longing. The longing, the yearning, and when I wrote Day of the Picnic, I had no expectation that there could be any reconciliation or forgiveness at all. I can hear, please, just one word, Mr. Kofi. And that was a big surprise. At some point in my 20s, I, 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 I literally threw out my books. I guess I had this feeling that I needed to do something manual, so I tried pottery and I was really bad. I got dizzy with the wheel and stained glass was hopeless. And if finally this potter I knew uh, explained to me how to juggle. I don't think I really understood that, you know, moments of grace or, or insight or, you know, like good writing, actually are dependent on a day-to-day -day process. And with juggling, there is no way <laughs> you can get around that. So uh, I, I think actually juggling saved me as a writer. And then the other thing that it taught me to understand that language plays counterpoint to movement. It's Mr. Kumbi. Mr. Kumbi. Mr. Kumbi walking toward us. Mr. Kumbi doesn't know how to walk. There's a very serious know, thing going on with a highly yes. comic sense. Yes, I can't write anything without there You're being some kind of silly, funny thing in there, too. <laughs> Theater's about moments of crisis. Those moments of crisis maybe are an opportunity of, of some fundamental kind. Coming, Mrs. Fulbright, to get you. <laughs>